Hi everybody, Paul Gallagher. What I want to talk about in this video is hotspots. And it's pretty synonymous with infrared photography, digital infrared photography. If you're going out with a camera, at some stage you will get a hotspot on one of your images. Um, now there's some situations where they're very bad and there's some situations where they're quite manageable. But let's start just understanding the science behind a hotspot. It's down to the sensor and lens combination that you're using and there's a lot of them so i can't say here do x y and z and it won't happen because it depends on how many lenses what lenses they are in the in your bag how old they are what sense you've got on your camera how old your camera is this is got a, this image has got a hot spot and this was taken with a converted d800 with a pretty good lens so they can occur and catch it out sometimes the reason why they're really bad with open landscape images, i.e. like blue skies, is that they're incredibly difficult to get rid of. In a scene like this, they're quite easy to get rid of. And what causes it is as the light is coming through, through the lens of the camera, it kind of goes through the individual elements of a lens and then it goes through your aperture and the rear element of, of your lens redistributes the light which hits your sensor. All of them elements are coated and some of the some of the coatings on some of the elements intensify infrared. Therefore, they make the center of the particular image paler. And that's what we can see here with this image. If we go in slightly into the image, we can see that the tonality at the top there is far more contrasty and the dark areas are much darker around the outside. But when we go into the center there, it's paler. And that is a hotspot. Now, to get rid of them it may seem like a very difficult thing because it's one part of an image, but there's two main ways of getting rid of them, which is quite straightforward. We are here, we're in Adobe Camera Raw, and we're going to use an adjustment brush. So we'll go up here and select our adjustment brush. We'll click on Mask Options there. Set your flow at 50, up here around about 50 and set your density at 100. The reason being is the hotspot tends to fade off towards the edges. So if we're laying down a mass, we'll make it more dense in the center and then move outwards ever so slightly. Okay, so I'm gonna lay this mass down. I'm gonna start in the center here, very gradually there, and then slowly but surely move outwards, okay? Try to avoid areas that are really dark, and I'll move into the center again there. Okay, so you're just covering the area that's mainly affected. There's a little bit up there as well. Now I'm gonna uncheck the mask. Okay, we've made no adjustments yet, but we can see from the pin where our adjustment at the center of our, our adjustment will be. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna tease the exposure down a little bit, ever so slightly, not too much, and then tease our blacks down ever so slightly. And what we can see now is the hot spot is beginning to vanish. And there it is, it's gone. Okay, so quite a straightforward process. If we see before and after, we do that. And that's where our hotspot was in the center of the image. Now that tonality in the center kind of more or less matches. We could probably go a little bit further on the blacks, maybe actually a little a teeny bit further like that. Okay, but how do we do this in Photoshop? And what do we do? Well, I want to cancel that now. Okay, and is the image in Photoshop? Okay, now I'm gonna get a lasso tool here. Now, and then I'm gonna set a feather. For this hotspot in this particular image, um, the feather of 130 is about right, okay? But that, once again, depends on the, the pixel dimensions of your particular image. That's what it depends on. If you're using a six megapixel old camera that you've had converted to infrared, then the feather will be smaller. If you're using a GFX at 50 megapixels, then the feather will be bigger. It's down to the pixel dimensions of your camera. But the principle still applies. We want a nice soft feather so it fades off. We can see the difference between tonality here and here is different but it fades quite quite significantly it blends in it's not a hard circle in the middle of the image now talking of hotspots and how it's caused i mentioned about lenses and coatings hotspots are more intense and more obvious the more you stop your lens down so if you can shoot a scene in infrared and shoot it at f8 
then shoot it at f8. If you don't, if depth of field isn't critical, shoot it at f8. If you shoot it at f16 or f18, and you're at risk of getting hot spots, it will be far more apparent at a smaller aperture. And hot spots are most dominant on bright days, hence this day here. The sun's coming right from the, through the thin canopy of the trees, and I was pointing the camera towards the brightest part of the scene. Therefore, the hot spot has been created by that intense sunlight coming through all the elements of the lens to the sensor. That's what's caused it. So with using a lasso tool, what we need to do is just cover the areas, get close to the areas that we think are affected by the hot spot. Okay, so we can see these greys here. They go round there, a little bit on that tree, but not too much round there and round to there. Okay, so if we go into quick mask over here now and click on that. We can see that that's basically the location of our hot spot, which, as I said, is right in the center of the frame. Uncheck that so we get rid of um, our quick mask and then we'll go into curves, go into a new adjustment layer and go into curves. And the best place to start is right down here, the lower part of your curve line, right down here. And if you pull that down, gradually, slowly but surely pull it down, you can see the tonality of the tree starting to normalise. Okay, bring it down, bring it down to about normal. And then when you've done that, go to the top end of the curve line up here and push that back so you get your whites back to where you want them, your paler tones where you want them. And now when we switch it on and off, we can see that's where our hotspot was and we've gotten rid of it. And when you knock it on and off, if it looks a bit too heavy, you can always adjust it. You can always nudge it back up a little bit. But generally, that's what it will be. Sometimes you need to go over it twice if it's quite a big hotspot. You might have to do a larger area there and then go in again and do the centre of it again because the centre will be very, very pale the bigger the hotspot. But essentially, it's something that you will encounter if, you, if you're shooting really open scenes with a lot of blue sky. Whatever you do, don't stop down. If it does occur with blue skies and pretty plain skies, then it's quite difficult to get rid of. But don't fret. In woodland scenes, it's pretty easy to disguise and get rid of. And in some circumstances, by the time you've gone over your process and adjusted your image, a lot of it's gone anyway. So don't worry about it. But yeah, you probably will get hot spots, but that's the way around it. Thanks a million for listening.